Welcome to episode 13 of Liberty Me's Bourbon and Bitches. You can find this interview and more at our site, bnb.libertyme and also bourbonandbitches.com. My name is Tiffany Madison, Vice President of Coin Congress Events and co-founder of Creative Destructors. Our lovely Meg Gilliland is off tonight, but Lucy Steigerwald is feeling much better this week and has come to play. Lucy is a legendary Liberty journalist that writes for Vice and Antiwar.com as well as hosts her own awesome podcast, Politics for People Who Hate Politics, which you can also check out on Liberty Me. And we are joined tonight by Will Hi. Riccadella <laughs> of Hello. here in Bastard's pseudo fame. Uh, his show also <laughs> airs here on Liberty Me's recast. And the always awesome, awesome Faith Braverman is going to join us this evening as well. She's a writer with The Daily Caller, The Libertarian Republic, and a field coordinator for Turning Point USA. Welcome, everybody. What Thank are you, you. Doing? Whiskey. Ooh, I don't know. My roommate's friend brought it, and I was just like, I'm doing this thing called Bourbon and Bitches. Do you have any liquor with you? So he just pulls out a whiskey bottle from his pocket. I was like, all right, pour me some. <laughs> there you go. That's <laughs> awesome. Good. Yes, yes. Yummy. Yummy. What do you got? I have what do you have, beer. Lucy? It's, oh, I, 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 Nut Roll Ale. I just looked at that. All right. It's from Christmas. So that's it. It's pretty good. It's kind of warm, though. <laughs> no. What do you got, Will? Or are you being a, uh, a pretentious <laughs> crossfitter tonight? Yeah, I'm going to go to the gym after this, so I, uh, I'm going to defer. <laughs> Ill prepared. Ill prepared. I know, right? I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. So just so the audience is aware, you guys can ask questions. Uh, we're going to talk about some pretty awful issues, unfortunately, and then uh, take a live Q&A with you guys. So feel free to either jump up on camera or uh, type your questions out in the Q&A box. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump in. So I didn't watch the Oscars. The whole parade is beyond ridiculous and silly to me. But there was a bit of drama surrounding the movie American Sniper not receiving Best Picture over Birdman starring My Michael Keaton, which I also yeah. haven't seen. Um, the Twitterverse was full of very angry conservative voices, very, you know, essentially pissed off that Hollywood, liberal Hollywood, didn't, um, you know, award this film its, its Best Picture nomination. Personally, I'm pissed Interstellar didn't get it because that was a phenomenal film. It's one of the best movies I've seen in like 10 years. So, you know, I'm not sure if you guys have actually seen the movie. I mean, it was a very powerful film, regardless of your personal opinion about Riley Cooper's performance or whatever, or the legacy of, of Chris Kyle. But this outrage that took place on social media begs the question, for such a war-obsessed culture, do we have an obsession with war porn? And if so, what do you think causes that? Is it because of extreme nationalism, or do the American people perhaps feel guilty for sending these men and women into unjust wars for the last 10 years, only to neglect them when they return home? Um, are they praising a movie because it's a superficial way of pretending they're connected to the troops? Um, or caring about the wars that they, they send them to, or is there something else? What are your thoughts? Um, I do know that a lot of movie, a rock war movies have failed in the past decade. Like, nobody wanted to watch them because nobody wanted to be reminded of the wars that were happening. For some reason, American Sniper has done super, super well, which I think is interesting. Um, I have not seen it, so I'm going to try not to be one of those douchebags who makes assumptions about it. But... Chris Kyle is a horrible choice for a subject of a movie made by a good director, and I do know that, so eh, I don't know. Because he sounds like he was a terrible person. <laughs> I haven't seen uh, American Sniper yeah, either, asshole. but I do know that they pass a fake baby around in one scene, so that just kind of turned me off immediately, because I, I was just like, that is clearly a fake baby. I do not want to see this movie. It's It's stupid. Just based solely on that, kind of a shallow reason. But um, I did see Birdman. It's a great deal breaker. Yeah, right? I did see Birdman. too. It's the only Oscar movie I saw. Yeah, and it was good, right? I liked it. It was weird. I like weird. It was pretty good. Especially Michael Keaton. He was the best part. Yeah. I never even heard of it. Uh, I don't even, I never heard of that movie. My boyfriend it showed it to me because he's into that be indie old. hipster he's stuff. So. Well. I have more opinions about the Raymond Carver thing they were adapting so do we, to do about we, any of the other movies that were at the uh, Oscars. Okay. That's how much I missed the movies this year. Uh, 
Yeah, it's interesting to me um, because, you know, there's uh, in the circles of veterans that I've been around, you know, they don't want people to thank them for their service or defending them their free, for defending their freedom. You know, they've seen brothers and sisters fall or return names, you know, impaired and then later get neglected by the very system that the American people failed to hold accountable. And, you know, some will tell you that they did it for the freedoms of Iraqis and, you know, they're now succumbing to the Islamic State. Um, or freedom of corporations to build Afghanistan's infrastructure, which is already crumbling. But, you know, they see cities that Americans led and fell in and the locals they trained just surrender. So to me, it's, it's, almost, um, it's almost really showing the disconnect, I think, between the American citizen and the person who actually really, really loved that movie and what a true experience was for someone that had to be involved in that war. Um, you know, I, I really think it's, it's interesting because you know, most veterans get enraged when they return home to this blissfully unaware country full of people that ask, oh, we're still over at war over there. Um, you know, many more would probably wish that we'd save our four second handshakes and superficial praise for war movies like American Sniper and actually give a shit about their sacrifices, but not continuing to send them into these hell holes without a plan or strategy. So it's to me, it's war porn, mostly for those, and I had mentioned this um, the other day on another thread, um, mostly for those who have never been to war and never will, despite their living room, Fox News fueled cheerleading, um, you know, it's old men that, you know, basically repeat disgrace, Bush era, treasonous, warmongering career bureaucrats after their weekly scripted fear sessions on the O'Reilly factor that are cheering, yeah, the guy go over there and kick some ass. But who is that? Who's going to do that? You? No. It's old men dreaming up wars for young men to die in. And yet the VA is hemorrhaging for volunteers. And you can bet those same drum beaters have never stepped foot in a local VA to help or bond with the neglected vets in their own backyard. So to me, it's, it's extremely superficial and it's very indicative of this continued breach between almost a betrayal of trust between what service members are actually asked to do and what the American people continue to be okay. engaged in. Um, do you guys Jimmy, agree? I or ask, did you read the Atlantic monthly story from last month about the military? Because it's all about the disconnect between the military and American culture today. No, I, I haven't. In fact, I'm reading a book right now by Andrew Bakovich mm -hmm. called Breach of Trust, how the American citizens betrayed their, their American soldiers. And um, I got to say, he makes a lot of really compelling points. You know, he talked about Vietnam and how there was this almost rebellion within the ranks uh, in the, during the Vietnam era where people were tired of this shit. They're getting slaughtered. And they came back and there was this anti-war effort that just carried on for a while. And then slowly that faded over the generations. And now it's just seen as this this very flippant thing that we just do because it's what we do because we're America. We're so yeah, it's 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 really disgusting. Um, I, I was a crisis counselor with veterans for a while and it's vile uh, to me because it, again, most Americans don't realize that we're still over there, that we have special forces on the ground right now in Iraq. Like we're not not engaged in the fight against the Islamic State. It's, it's such a ridiculous charade. Uh, but what, so what was it that they had um, mentioned? Well, the idea, and like, this is obviously not, you know, in the same universe of, of radicalism, troop hating that I, I don't really hate troops, but, um, that I am, but the article is all about how, you know, 50 years ago, way more people were involved in the military. You, you'd know more people in the military. The military was a lot closer to Americans in their everyday lives. And not only was that different, but also the fact that the military was familiar, this guy's posits. Um, people held them more accountable and they mocked them in cultural things like Catch-22 and MASH and just like lots of other things. There wasn't this distant, like, oh my god, I support the troops, I would never mock them, but also I don't pay any attention to what they're doing right now. Um, so it's a really interesting article. It's worth a read. It's by uh, James Fallows. So I would check that out if I were you. Let's check it out. I just I just noted it, so thank you. Good rec. Go ahead, well, what do you guys think, Will? Talk. About the mil our military, our military strategy in the Middle East, or the fact that uh, the movie didn't win an Oscar. All of the above. Well, I could care less about the Oscars. The market seems to determine that people liked. American what's the movie Sniper. called again? American Sniper. People seem to like it. It made with 300 million plus. I don't know why I need an elitist liberal in Hollywood to tell me what movie people like, but. Um, 
uh, uh, the market decides. I don't know, in the strategy in Iraq and Afghanistan, I largely agree only insofar as we don't really have a strategy there. Certainly in Afghanistan, we don't have a strategy. Yep. We just gave a timeline for a withdrawal, which doesn't seem like doesn't seem like a good idea. I just would, if I was the president and, and I didn't have the stomach for war, I didn't have the stomach to win, or I didn't well, have well, a strategy, just take, I'd bring them home at this point. I don't see what the point they're, what, what they're, well, no, I, I, I agree, but I'm just saying it's, it's, it's intentional only because it's a political strategy. He does things for political purposes, mm -hmm. so he's putting people in harm's well, way I mean that war, to satisfy war a political is agenda. In the Middle um, East, I think like that's they keep what a creating these does. new crises so that we have to keep being engaged. There's no option for us except to be engaged, and they want that because of the military-industrial complex in this country, mm -hmm. like Boeing and Lockheed Martin. They're making yeah, so much money hey. off of war. Well, I don't know if we created it. I don't know if we so much created it. Wars have been raging there involved. for thousands of years. I, I just don't. We went in there without a strategy, and we're still there without one. No, I, absolutely. But I'm just saying, there's just there's always been wars there. It's really not in our self. It's not well, in our best interest ISIS to be there without a strategy. Yeah. There's no point. Well, we built up ISIS as point. this threat intentionally, like armed them, trained them, continuing to arm them, continuing to give them money, and we wonder why it, things are so horrible over there. It's because it's intentional like these psychopaths are running the nation and endangering people like Tiffany's husband and people like my brother who you know served two tours uh it's it's insane that we're still going back there and there isn't more of an outcry like I remember back when we were talking about going to war in Syria there was this massive outcry people were like no enough is enough and now it's like everyone's just forgotten about it and like well we have to do something about ISIS look at them slaughtering all these Christians and I agree it's right. awful but we can definitely help the problem by not giving them money. That's all I'm saying. The Syria thing was amazing. The United States was like the airdropping money. them weapons and whatnot. Sorry, Lucy. We're air oh yeah. We're airdropping weapons. I mean, we say it's accidental, but come on. They're, they're, they say on their Twitter uh, a gift from U.S. taxpayers, <laughs> where they tweet photos of their weapons or whatever. Not just more incompetence. I mean. Or the fact that the people the U.S. trained dropped their weapons and, and fled when ISIS was taking over Iraq, and then ISIS was like, "Ooh, American weapons." I mean, it's a I mean, possibility, that's but so incompetent. It's so okay. incompetent that you know that's how conspiracy theories are born because that's how stupid some of these plans are. Fair but enough. <laughs> there's a line. I mean, the line is there are certain people who kind of like being engaged in wars, but I don't think they tell themselves they like it. I think they tell themselves they have to, and they tell themselves, gee, this plan is going to work this time. But the sort of self-awareness that I think you're attributing to them, I, I don't know that I, I buy that exactly. Fair enough. I could send you some likes, but... Yeah, the unfortunate situation is, yeah, they had a, um, you know, our our proxy war against Russia, and... You know the freedom fighting for the Syrians, which is such a ridiculous, ludicrous sham. Um, shipping them weapons, and then of course, you know, especially you know, Lucy, I know you're familiar with this, but they were underfed, outmatched, and all of these foreign fighters with foreign money that are also waging proxy wars come in, and they are experienced, they're grizzled, they're armed, they have a ton of supplies. So of course, they folded within the movement. Many of them did, and then later. These, these very Syrians who were having their co-op or the revolution co-op surrendered their weapons and then backed away or began fighting both the Islamic State and Assad at the same time. So their revolution was co-opt and a majority of the weapons that we gave them fell into the wrong hands. I mean, they have the equipment from us and likely from Russia as well. So it's an, it's an awful potential quagmire to get involved in on a scale that is unlike Afghanistan and, and Iraq, the potential for it, really. Um, and, you know, that actually brings us to... It's just so, I mean... The American people are more interested in fucking American Idol and the Super Bowl, <laughs> and I love football. So I'm not bitching, but Cowboys were robbed this year. But anyway... Um, you know, I, they, they really do. They get away with it because, you know, you've got you've got Fox News pundits, these suited criminals from the Bush era administration had so much blood of my countrymen on their hands the and likely a million too. civilians on their hands, you know, and they're not they're a lot of blood on them too. It's awful. It's awful on all sides. I mean, why are they even consulted? It's an insult to every viewer's intelligence, but because they don't actually know what took place 
in Iraq, I mean, they don't know anything about the Sunni awakening. They don't know anything about Fallujah 1 and 2, and that that was the most bloody battle since Vietnam in a guerrilla environment. I mean, they are so unaware of the actual battles that took place there. There's no romanticism behind it because they were drowning themselves in honey boo boo and shit like that. You know, most of those guys should be in jail, not pretending they didn't wage an epic, unnecessary war and then usher in the American police state. You know, now they're the foremost experts on war strategy against the Islamic State. It's, it's ludicrous. Um, and, you know, this, uh, this um, gentleman in the chat said, you know, it's, if you don't have solutions, it's bitching. I don't think any solution is easy, but what we've tried has not worked and a reset button is needed. And if you're going to talk about actual strategy, the Iraqis are going to have to determine their future. I mean, the Kurds have already taken, you know, they took her cook, they won subsequent battles. You know, the oil resources, they're going to have to fight to defend them. I mean, they didn't ask for anyone's permission to form their own autonomous state up north. I mean, they acted. So if the Islamic State is turned back outside of Baghdad consistently and borders are drawn there, I mean, you almost have a three state solution by proxy. And the Islamic State's not going anywhere. They issue passports, they have border checkpoints, they have an entire government infrastructure and legal system set up. So, you know, presuming that we can just bomb them yeah you're just gonna go over and bomb them now targeted airstrikes i mean i knew those were inevitable and if you know if if the targeted airstrikes and supporting the curbs doesn't stave off their their continued rise washington will have a blank check for full-scale war so i prefer targeted airstrikes no boots on the ground really at the hands of the iraqi military and the curbs who are grizzled bastards um to which is inevitable we're going to be involved inevitably as opposed to full scale war, which is possibly pre pre preventable. So Washington's going to get a war one way or another. Yeah. They always do. It's just the scale. It is. And, and that, I mean, that's just the reality of the situation. Kind of you know, and sneaky we have way of going about it, as opposed to boots on the ground, yeah. just using uh, airstrikes. But you have to take into account all the innocent civilians that are dying in these airstrikes, many of them children, many of them women who have nothing to do with ISIS or the Taliban or anything like that, that are being, you know, killed in droves. Uh, that's not right either. So, I mean, you could say that they're just collateral damage to serve this greater purpose, but, sorry? No one takes them into account, Faith. I also think that we should all start saying in the word, like, just let, if we're going to call them collateral damage, we should just attribute that to Timothy McVeigh to make everyone really uncomfortable. <laughs> like, I'm going to start doing that from now on. You know, as Timothy McVeigh said, they were collateral damage. It's yep. it's fine. Whatever. Yeah, the the interesting thing about that too is again, you know, um, when I when I argue with these same conservatives who again never been to war and they won't go there now, it's well we need to you know intervene and get in there now before it gets worse and all this other stuff. We just bomb the place, you know, fuck them all. They're literally occupying an entire city and subjecting the former moderates of this local population to their nonsensical rules of how they perceive Islam because they're, they're authoritarian. So they twist it and then enforce it against this local population. So it, it, it's, not, it's asymmetrical warfare. It's not a matter of just rolling in in tanks and bombing the place. It's, it's a laughable idea. I mean, if you, if you want to empower the local region to actually be able to continue to defend themselves against these zealots, which number in the 30 to 40 thousands, as some estimates place it, they have to have the ability to, to get them grow a pair and defend your country. And the Kurds have proven time and time again that they can and will do that. So you know, the warmongers wanted to intervene with airstrikes, so they did. And the reality of it was, so, you know, they are not going to not intervene, which would be ideal, because they already are, which is the reality. It's stupid and it's wrong, but we can't take back those airstrikes and they're not going to stop calling for more. So that should be the end of it if the alternative is full scale war. And I can't imagine that the, you know, these beheading of these Christians has been taking place, which is awful. It's really, really sad that the Islamic State doesn't know that that is a perfect strategy to lure the radical Christian lobby that hates Obama into actually sanctioning a very unchristian by principle practice of going to war yeah, aggressively war. so they, it's, they it's a really common. odd they, mixture the of, warmongers i mean they do they're, yeah. they're, they're trying as hard as possible with the glossiest propaganda videos to make a war happen and they're going to get what they want because that's how it works yeah 
Yeah. And a lot of the stuff that they do too is because, you know, they're they're trying to drag the Peshmerga away from strongholds only to rout them, you know, which is an, an initial reason for the airstrikes. And two, they threatened to continue viability back then when we first got involved with Mosul Dam. And that would the catastrophic failure of Mosul Dam would have resulted in the flooding of the Tigris all the way down to Baghdad. So if we don't think the war machine wouldn't use any of that, those type of circumstances to rile up American sympathies to to support the airstrikes, they're going to use anything they can, these beheading of the Christians or journalists or humanitarians or all these matter. poor people, and dead babies and destruction. You have to do something. And I don't approve of We've that. We've heard it all before. I, 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 you yeah. can be sympathetic towards something We've that heard happened, but We've heard it if all. you're not inherent, like this is something Ron Paul says that I agree with, that, you know, the people that started this problem in the Middle East, they can be the ones to go. Like you can get Dick Cheney driving a first aid ambulance or whatever, instead of having, you know, sending people like you and me off to die in a war that they started. How about they fix the mess themselves? That's my stance. I just don't, at this point, the damage is done. We've gone too far. We can't fix it. All The best thing we can do now is to just stay out of it completely and remove all aid to everybody, just even the rebels, because they turn inevitably. That's what happened with the Mujahideen. That's what people claim happened with ISIS. I think the government knew all along that they were going to turn and they wanted this conflict to happen. I mean, if, if, if at this point you're trusting rebels to, to do what they say they're going to do, you're naive or you're stupid or you know that they're going to turn in the long run. That's just my take. I'm with Faith, so I don't, I don't know about the ISIS thing. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, you are right about everything. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the arming the free Syrian army, I mean, it's unfortunate that Syria will not see I, I, I hope they do in their lifetime a, a, you know, a boot off their neck. Um, but let Assad deal with the Islamic State. Stop barraging him and sending weapons to this insurgency that just folds uh, and supporting training for any faction of the FSA or its assets were never wise. I mean, from my research, literally, you have Al Raqqa Revolutionaries Brigade, the Manjab Brigade, the Eastern Front. All of these were mostly moderate opposition forces that were fighting both the Islamic State and Assad and are now continued to be bombarded on all sides by them. If you allow Assad to, by stop fueling the free Syrian conflict, to actually go out and try to crush the Islamic State, I think that would actually be a preferable option to sending my countrymen into another shithole that you don't have a plan for. You have no action. So it's it's awful. It's an awful situation all around. But I can't imagine that intervention will will do anything positive for that. Yeah. So I don't know why it would this time, except. Every time we have to, this time, because every time the group is totally the worst. <laughs> I mean, the pattern, it's like, it's, like they, it's like nobody can remember farther back than five years ago, or I guess to 9-11 in, in, in a few cases. Like, it's, it's like they have never read a fucking book in their lives, and that they have no conception of what human beings will do in certain cir circumstances. It drives me completely insane. It happened in Vietnam. It happens in every single war. Um, and Ron Paul, for all of his, his old man-isms, is the best because <laughs> back in 2012 in particular, he stood in front of the whole world and said, hey guys, if we did this thing, I'm sorry, if, if someone else did this thing that we do to us, we'd be mad. It's like this fucking third grade lesson in empathy and human beings that nobody seems to be able to grasp, but bless his old man heart, he tried. I ran so hard, Tiffany went away. <laughs> She's like hiding behind me on my screen. <laughs> well, don't leave me disagreeable. Come on. Yo. I'm ready. Do it. Conservative. I mean, my, my view is fairly simple. I don't really care about Syria. I don't care about Assad. I don't really care about, I mean, what's going on now with the stability in Iraq or the stability in Afghanistan. I just care about ISIS and uh, doing airstrikes isn't sufficient. I just care about annihilating it, not just the people, but also the ideology, much like we annihilated the Nazi ideology and that of Tojo and Imperial Japan and it World War exists, II. It still exists, Nazis. Really cool it's still around. Right, but, right, but is Nazism well, a threat like it was yes, during World War II or the end of war period? Because even. Of, yeah, I'm talking about an that's raging in these new neo Nazi groups as well as Islamic groups. They're getting it on both sides. This, well, it's not it's it's not just neo Nazis yeah. that hate the Jews. Right, but I mean, not, a far, I mean, a far right you know, Nazi and that's ideology. beside the point. I'm just saying that ISIS is a, a so 
Top military, you talk about the military an awful lot. Top military brass has said ISIS is a threat to the homeland. I don't know why they would lie about it. I don't think that, you know, they necessarily want to send people in to die for a cause that uh, they made up or some politician made up. I'm just saying that I don't, I, I see parallels to the interwar period, certainly with a war weary uh, population, much like the French and the British in the interwar period. And I, and, and you know, uh, Hitler marched openly into the Rhineland and France and, 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 and Britain did nothing about it. And hence we got, you got more war. Uh, you, you know what I mean? You had the war weary French who lost, I think 1.4 million in World War One, but fought very valiantly. Um, didn't want to do anything to stop the Nazi threat, and they got exactly also what they didn't want, which was another war. I don't know. I just don't want to see them build an infrastructure. Damn, there's no line. Damn, there's huh? no line. That was not a good plan, you guys. But, uh... They're just going to go through Belgium. Just gonna go <laughs> no, but I mean, that's. I just well, think we wipe out the threat. And I think the region if, are stepping up. The Kurds, and I think if you do the these... Yazidis, they're working to bring out ISIS. The Kurds can't... The Kurds... <laughs> The the Yazidis are they're getting slaughtered. Back. Their daughters are being sold into the slave yeah, trade. Yeah, but they're their also fighting back, and they're and winning in some skirmishes. The, how? I mean, ISIS. ISIS no, ISIS is gaining Kobani? territory. They gain territory in Libya, parts of Afghanistan, Iraq. They're five hundred. They're five hundred miles off the coast of Italy. I mean, they're not losing. That's the problem. I, I you know. You could say all day, no, we should we shouldn't do anything, and that's totally fine. I mean, we could wait till they actually. I mean, they said. They say top military brass, not me. I have no reason to deny that it's not true, that they're a threat to the homeland. We have this African, who is it, Al-Shabaab, threatening to blow up the Mall of America, and so on and so forth. Did you forget about the fear-mongering hysteria of the Bush years? Like, I'm not saying attributing, like, a mass conspiracy, but the idea that you should just trust when someone says they're a threat to the homeland, like, and that's the end of it is absolutely an anti anti government attitude. No, I, no, well let's well let's not let's not let's not trust them. See what happens. I mean, why what's it I mean, what's the like we have a military, right? And it's to defend the country. If they're at, our military is far superior to theirs, they don't have the infrastructure necessary to really pose a threat to our military with a ground invasion. If we're just pinpricking them, get out. There's no sense to do this what is he what does he call it? A limited war he wanted and he wanted a just airstrikes. That's not what. That's not what you do. You when you go to war, you go to war for victory. You're just putting people in harm's way for no that's, purpose at all. And I mean, the, a people's a, certainly people our age are you know consider war this thing where where America is like a police force. We go in, we set up a democracy, or we set up a nation. That's never how we fought wars. FDR never fought yeah, FDR wars that way. Really uh, the, Truman never fought them that but, way. Eisenhower never fought them that way. I don't understand where that came from. We go in, you destroy, you annihilate the, the enemy, you annihilate the ideology. The Soul. You know? I just like, I mean, do you want if you want to rehash I don't know. World we just, War II? It's just like people will go to war and it's like... Go ahead and rehash World War II and how bullshit it is. Because I'm ready. But I'm just saying, people are th people think war is go in, you you know, you hang out, you train their military, uh, you know, and people just blithely die. That's not really how you're it was ever supposed to be. It was we go in, we defeat, we defeat countries. the enemy, and you get out. We're not a country this time. You're right. It's more of an ideology, and I don't think that you can completely stamp out an ideology. That's just it's it's well, foolish to think that way. Mm -hmm. Well, no, Nazism wasn't all Germany. Nazism was in old Germany. I, ISIS has demarcated territories. We know where they are. It's not like we don't know. It's not like we can't go in there and drive them all out and kill every last one of them. It's entirely Nazism possible. I'm just saying I'd rather do it now before they build an infrastructure. I mean, there's, there, it was, it was, Nazism was also huh? centralized in one state under one incredibly cult of personality type Fuhrer. So it is easier to stamp that out. Sure. Th this is 1990. This is nineteen. This is 1933. Holy this fuck. is what it is. You have this I mean, fellow that runs ISIS. Every German? <laughs> right? No, we just killed a couple million. No, it wasn't. We weren't there to kill Germans. We were there to stamp. We were there to stamp out an ideology, a sick they're ideology. Sick. Oh, they were sick. But you know what I mean? We went in there. We stamped it out. Let's see. Right. I'm gonna say like like. That's all I'm saying. Either do it, go in, wipe them out, or don't. Because we were not there to save the Jews. The worst thing the Nazis did was the Holocaust. Obviously, taking over Europe is also really bad. The worst thing they did was the Holocaust. The U.S. knew for years. The U.S. did not let in enough Jews to even fill the immigration quotas. 
eventually near the end of the war, they were like, they hear Raoul Wallenberg have a couple bucks and save a few Jews, and he, you know, did amazing things. They didn't give a shit about the, the biggest victims of, you know, the worst crime in, in historical memory. So why do we get to act now like we were so good? Slightly better than Hitler is a really low bar. And the things the Allies did were so bad that it's, I mean, but we did it to save the Jews, right? Even though we didn't. Yeah, and we let it's, Stalin get away with really killing millions of people that. as well. Well, you know, why did we well, let no. Stalin get away with killing millions and not Hitler? It's just interesting. Because if you're the absolute worst, as long as you're not quite as bad, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same with ISIS. You know, we're trolls of intelligence on Twitter. Like, well, we don't decapitate people, right? We do it with bombs. So we're this much better, maybe. Basically, who would Jesus I mean, bomb? Come on, like, I thought, like, sh who indeed? <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah? That was God. I don't that know. Was dad. No, That's Old Testament God. God. That's the bad guy God. The new Jesus guy is way nicer, way more yeah. chill. I don't that's fair. <laughs> Same God. Same God. Anyway. We haven't even read about war movies yet. I have a lot of feelings about that, too. War movies? Can we say love bombs? What's oh, your favorite I war movie, Jeff, Lucy? Such... Do you like war movies? I, I love war movies. It's a bit of a conflict. What's your favorite? Um, The Great Escape was always my favorite, but also Downfall, which is about Hitler. Love that um, first movie. That movie is amazing. amazing. Which one? Oh yeah, it's so good though. And then the more I become an anti-war crazy person, the more the harder it is to love war movies. But I still kind of love them. Yeah, I watched Saving Private Ryan recently, and it just like I hadn't seen it since I was a kid, and it just ripped, it gutted me. It was awful. I was like, it's a great movie, excellent, great but just movie. so gory. And like I can even remember as a great kid being movie. like, why? Yeah, just Ooh, you think about. No, haven't you, seen that. You ever watched Jewish. the pianist? That movie hurts. <laughs> you ever, oh, that's a rough one too, man. I oh, uh, once every yeah. ten years Same I can maybe watch that. that. For me that's too. Cool. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that I see that one time. I'm all done. I can't do that again. What's that other movie though? With the there was another war oh, movie yeah, that came out uh, last year with Mark Wahlberg. I just watched um, it the other day too. Oh my gosh, this is gonna bug me. Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor. About that other fella, right? Yeah, he was the Lone only one that survived. Survivor. Lone Survivor. I can't. I can't Did watch that. That's just too sad. I'm not doing it. And I'm not watching Did the American serve? Sniper. I don't like watching that. Huh? Okay. No, I just can't. I just can't about, deal with that stuff. Too empathetic, I suppose. Letters for Iwo Jima is awesome. Like I'm gonna start. I'm gonna bring back the contentiousness. Um, and Letters for Iwo Jima is from the point of view yeah, of that a was fighter good. for a horrible state. You know, more horrible than average arguably i mean some seriously bad shit happened under imperial japan and i'm just wondering how many decades it's going to take for an equivalent where we get the side of the iraqi insurgents like the opposite side of american sniper because i think that would be a really worthwhile movie okay and clint eastwood would be run out of the country with pitchforks if he did that honestly yeah. did you lucy did you like platoon I yet is that the one with Charlie Sheen? I, I actually haven't seen as many oh, Apocalypse Now Vietnam movies. I'm a little light on my Vietnam movies. Oh, see Apocalypse Now. I That's would like, like a quintessential Vietnam War flick. Oh. I think. Apocalypse Now is awesome because it has smart things to say about war being crazy and having rules about war being crazy too and things like that. Yeah. Um, I would like someone to make a We movie Were Soldiers about was good though too. Hugh Thompson Jr. and his helicopter crew who saved. Who pointed their own guns at their own soldiers at Milai and were treated like shit for the next three decades about it because they were traitors. Traitors. Like, I think that we should start making more movies like that. Really just depressing as shit. Like, here were three people who did the right thing. And for 30 years, like, people sent him dead animals in the mail. This one senator tried to actually blame him for Milai and some of the people that did it. Like, let's make those war movies. Just, just, just make everyone sad. Yeah. That's what we should do. <laughs> I saw them. <laughs> they do make you. I mean, I saw every war movie on, makes you sad. Of, like, you know. Sorry, I'm really ranting. I apologize. Like I, Eastwood's whole idea that Chris Kyle, who was a complete fucking sociopath and pathological liar, 
the war made him sad and broke his heart. That's the biggest anti-war message that I can possibly imagine. I like Eastwood. I think he's very talented. I appreciate that he didn't support the war in Iraq. But if that's the most anti-war premise that you can think of, that a fucking sociopath was upset about going to Iraq, then you're not thinking hard enough. I'm sorry. Very nice. I'm still going to watch it at some point. But like, yeah. I saw this funny thing on like Facebook. The whole like, it was about... war makes... Yeah. I saw a funny little. So angry. Where the hell is Tiffany? <laughs> she's she's just listening. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. I, I just uh, my father was a my no, it's okay. My father was a combat veteran in Vietnam, and he loved Platoon. That was his favorite out of all of it. I guess it was the most accurate depiction, and he would watch that stuff all the time, just repetitively. It's almost reminding him of where he's been and where he's come from. Um, but I would say probably one of the most anti-war uh war movies is apocalypse now it's a phenomenal film that was a great I movie have. and lucy if you've never seen it highly I recommend it it was amazing it yeah it's a really 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 good film there yeah was a, it's a very very good film i think it's even on netflix or something but it's it was like i can't recommend it one of my classic. uh did you ever see the deer hunter oh, too fuck the deer hunter the deer hunter sucks <laughs> yeah deer hunter is also a really good movie I, <laughs> what? I inherited a hatred really, really of the Deer Hunter. It's a great movie. Okay. The the Russian roulette I scene. Deer Hunter was a great film. Dripping with bullshit. The Russian roulette, the Russian roulette scene's like the best scene in oh, any okay. movie I've ever I seen. I want to tell you guys this Not one. Not the least the fact okay. that they leave Pittsburgh and go visit Mountain Cascades after driving for half an hour. That's not what Western Pennsylvania <laughs> looks like. I wish it did. That's like Banff National Park or something. Lucy and I are going to find okay. something we agree on one of these I'm going to tell you guys this little comic strip that I just saw. It said, it's a little comedian saying, not only will America go to your country and kill all your people, but they'll come back 20 years later and make a movie about how killing your people made their soldiers feel sad. <laughs> I just looked at that. I looked at that. Like, in the in the chat oh, box. God. That's Frankie Boyle, Scottish comedian. Dude, nice. That's the most beautiful summation of everything ever. I love it. Give me one second, guys. My computer's about to die. I don't have my charger. <laughs> he also talks about weddings, fighting. Mostly. Yeah, um, Jeff brought up a Jeff brought up a really, really good point. Born on the Fourth of July was a movie that makes you hate war. That was an awesome film. Depressing as shit, but it was really good. I also was um, I get deeply disturbed by those films. It's really hard for me to watch. I think I yelled at Lone Survivor like the whole time. Um, and not in good ways. It actually made me very anti-libertarian because, you know, I'm like, you need to kill that kid. I'm sorry. Exactly. That's <laughs> what I said. That's I said, survival. do you just kill this kid? That's survival. It's I know. awful. It's awful to be put in those situations. And I know they volunteered and I understand that. And it makes me an awful person, but it's also brutal survival. It's, Can't it take sucks, a chance. But, they have yeah, families. I mean, they have families that depend on them. Kids, you got to do it. Fucking go. How about that? You know? Well, it's just survival in general. You don't have right. a draft anymore. I mean, that's yeah. no, I, People There's depend on them to come home. That's what I would do it for. I know that, you know what I mean? I, <laughs> I keep thinking about it. It's horrible. I'll be right back. Yeah, uh, Black Hawk Down uh, made me cry. I can't that's watch a that good movie. movie. It was such a senseless situation. It was so senseless for them to be there. It's a good film, but I, I couldn't, I still can't finish it to this day. It's, it's, just ugh, it bothers me a lot because it was yeah. pointless it literally it's really intense kind of, and like you have to like just like write it out and watch it and then it sort of exhausts you in my experience even without any personal connection to the subject matter it's just sort of a slog to tolerate it <laughs> it's a good way to put it fishing book too i like civil war movies like that <laughs> I really, oh like, my I don't gosh. want American soldiers to die, but I do not accept the idea that them being hurt by war is the biggest tragedy possible. Because that's a really evil idea that is perpetuated all throughout our culture, and it's just not true. Mm -hmm. Because those people are also people, turns out. I mean, the negative and ramifications of war are very present. You can't like deny yeah. that a lot of soldiers are coming back with PTSD. And people like my grandfather, who served in World War II, they have mega PTSD. But a good, this is kind of going off a, a little off topic. Do you guys mind going with me? A little, okay, cool. 
Uh, well, I, my boyfriend is actually studying transpersonal psychology and how drugs like MDMA and psilocybin and psychedelic mushrooms can help treat PTSD. I'm sure you guys have seen this floating around, but this is why I'm a big advocate of legalizing all drugs because, I mean, these guys that are coming back from war and are having night terrors and all these horrible psychological consequences, they're able to be cured within a few sessions of uh, MDMA or psilocybin-assisted therapy. It's incredible. I've heard that about MDMA. Like I am a huge advocate of DMT. I think um, I think ayahuasca is I something love you, that Tiffany. Human oh my god. Have you ever done it? Off once. the record. The level of human consciousness that is potential <laughs> burning it's not on the I can't answer that question, <laughs> but Burning Man, Burning Man, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I I'll, I'll, I'll be there man? pretty sure this year on business, of course, but yes, um it'll be uh it'll be a very very interesting time. Oh yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be a good time. So I'm gonna be in that area, and it's the week at, or two weeks after um, a, an event that I already have in San Francisco. So if I don't go, I'm an idiot. So yeah, it's it's definitely um, gonna be a good time. Yeah, um, I think that it's a it's a very dangerous thing for some people who have not sifted through very buried elements of their human consciousness. But there are a lot of soldiers out there who have already spent hours and hours and hours working through uh, consciously some of these things that have helped them break into maybe potential things that are buried and if under the right conditions and under you know the right guide and the right circumstances and and someone who's able to basically be an expert in the experience i think it's very very healthy it's something that i think should be considered as an experimental treatment so that people aren't doing it on their own without guidance and that aren't doing it on their own without knowing what the what the psychological risks and consequences are. I think if you actually, the VA is never obviously gonna support that, but if any faction or group, I mean, it's the same thing with medicinal cannabis, you should definitely be able to dabble in anything that is going to heal you potentially and allow you to explore parts of your mind that you've buried or don't want to face and are a willing participant in it. That's something that I think is very, very powerful for a lot of veterans. And again, it's something that has to be very delicately balanced. You can't put somebody in there that's, you know, like the guy who shot Chris Kyle, who was, you know, off his kilter to begin with. I mean, he could have a full mental breakdown. You never know. But there are a lot of people out there who are rather well adjusted that just need to get peel that those last 10 layers back. And if anything we can can do medicinally to help them start that, it, it's amazing. No, it doesn't have to be medicinal, but it is medicinal. I mean, I've known a lot of people who have dabbled in that and have come out of it extremely reformed as a human being. They're more centered. They're more connected to the earth. They're more aware of human connection, of their place in the world. It's It's very... It's very interesting to me if when you open that door to, to the veteran community, what they can be capable of in terms of healing. I think it's very powerful and it absolutely should be decriminalized. There's no reason why they should have to spend what, you know, little money they have saved up because the VA isn't, isn't going to pay them and have to fly down to fucking Columbia to do something like that. You're, you're really not free if you can't dabble into your own human consciousness or touch the universe. I think that's, that's something that is, it's ridiculous. So it would be it would be really really nice to be able to see uh, Jeff. Why don't you go look up what ayahuasca is and then um, it'll make a lot more sense. But yeah, it's um it's definitely it's definitely something that's very very powerful um, and awesome for your boyfriend doing that. Hopefully they're getting hard. grants he was and making some progress and, and doing and some good they stuff. They are trying that's to good. get more that's funding, really, really but it's good. it's so difficult to do in this country when yeah. it's illegal. Like the experiments that they're doing, while they're yielding all these amazing positive results, they can't export further because of these laws just chokeholding them. It's so wrong. It's just unbelievably wrong that we can do something to help better the human condition and help wake people up to like what life is really all about. And we just aren't able to do it because of a stupid law that Nixon passed years and years ago. Same with the worst. Yeah, it's very, it's it's beyond antiquated. It's ludicrous. Okay. You what? Maybe it was Lucy. Are we well? Oh, me? One is, was it talking. Nixon. That's all. Nothing. This Nixon was really bad. I don't know anything about like. Mental you have nothing health. to add. Legalized Not to that. I don't know much about like, you know, put Nixon against mental the wall, But he's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm All right. Not a huge fan of Nixon, so. Everybody you know. has a reason. But, but Bush him. isn't. Everybody. Bush isn't. Including conservatives. Each. Fucking price <laughs> controls? Like, yeah. everyone should hate Nixon. He, Brilliant guy. And the, bad president. He was bad in, like, every way. Yeah. My God. I know, in that. I mean, he was, an, he was an economic illiterate, but he really only cared about politics over any, you know, he economics right and people. He right that East Coast so. douchebags like the Kennedys got away with murder, but his conclusion was, I should be able to get away with that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think John F. Kennedy was the right. last... Yeah, he did get I think JFK was the last legally elected president in this country. I think since he's he was assassinated, the whole presidential game changed. Now they all have to follow the certain pattern. If they deviate from the pattern, they'll be taken out. I think that the whole Reagan assassination was an attempt on Reagan's life because he was going against what the establishment wanted, and that was just like a warning. Like there's this rumor that George Bush Sr. visited yep. Reagan in the hospital and said, "Next time, we're not going to miss." Rumor, admittedly, but it makes a lot of sense when you look at Reagan's subsequent actions. Just, I'll be the token conspiracy nut. I don't. Wait, care. what? Wait, what? What year was Reagan um, shot at? What year was that? I can't remember the eighty-one. Yeah, and John Hinckley, John Hinckley, the guy that shot him, was had really close ties with the Bush family, the Hinckley yeah. family. Dun, dun, dun. You know, it's it's a more credible theory if it was early in his tenure than rather than later, but it was earlier. I, don't know. I think it? Reagan is a bit of a small government. Fraud. Yeah, no, yeah, but he's a bit of a small government fraud, though. Well, yeah, that's the thing. He was a fraud he later. Fraud. Like he was originally gonna shrink government, but then you know <laughs> they tried to kill him. So, uh oh, it's all too credible. The institution corrupts. <laughs> who would have who would have thought it? <laughs> Speaking about insti you know institutional corruption, so the Chicago Police Department. Um, this was released today. It was extremely disturbing to me. I actually was jamming away, being extremely productive. I'm working with this new uh, conference, like event experience, where you know they're maximizing human potential. It's really exciting and. I'm so like this last couple of weeks, I've been really, really anti politics and been very absorbed in the startup world and all this amazing innovation that's taking place. And I got ripped out of that by this disgusting article that was posted and broke by The Guardian today um, about the Chicago Police Department operating off the books interrogation compounds, rendering Americans unable to be found by family or attorneys while they're locked inside. And what the lawyers are saying is that it's the domestic equivalent of a CIA black site. I mean, I'll post the link here in the chat. Let that sink in for a moment. Um, I don't think anybody who's been paying attention for the last 10 years is necessarily surprised. But I mean, this facility is a warehouse and it's known as Home and Square. And it's been a scene of secretive work by special police units in Chicago. And these local attorneys are talking about actual American protesters, NATO protesters, anti-war activists that have been shackled in torture positions and their entire plethora of constitutional rights have been completely eliminated. You know, these police practices allegedly, and I'm actually reading from the article, allegedly they were keeping arrests out of official booking databases. So when the lawyer would show up, they would go to the, you know, Cook County police headquarters or whatever. and there's no mention of their client, but their client is missing and in the hands of police officers. Um, people beating, being beaten by police. One guy died, um, shackled for long stress posi positions and periods. They totally denied attorneys access to the secure facility and they were holding kids, Sounds like kids know, right. from 12 to 24 hours under these interrogation conditions including people as young as 15 like know, right? years old. Um, wow, that is, mm -hmm. it's awful. And I mean, what what does this mean for the state of, I mean, we all know that the, the American um, yeah. land of the free home of the brave is, is total bullshit. And it's only gotten worse in the last 20 years, especially since you, you know, um, pretty much have a, a perpetual war for perpetual peace state and this advancing militarization of your local law enforcement. But now you actually have police officers of a fucking city taking people, detaining them, putting them in torture stress positions. They haven't been accused of a crime. I mean, this is insane. 
Yeah. And the fact Army that it's being broken by alternative media is even more vile. And the fact that, yeah, and the fact that the Chicago local press isn't talking about this. I mean, I think I've seen a couple of things that have popped up here, but they're basically pretending like this story didn't break didn't break today. I mean, this is really like threat level sincere, guys. Like you have a fucking fourth, this is the fourth largest city in America, I believe, or the third. And I think Houston and them alternate. But um, you have this police department, which is basically the fucking Stasi, coming in and breaking into protest marches, snatching people, and then putting them, holding them in fucking terrorist stress, stress holds for 24 hours. When is enough enough? Like, when does shit like that start making Americans really sincerely think? I mean, when? Is that, oh, that, I wish I could give you I, a I'm better not surprised reason for when that's happening, but that'd be sick. This kind of gels with my um, annoying but beloved activist cousin in Oakland, California's experiences. Like, the fact that people kind of disappear from their lawyers for hours. That basically, I mean, you're under the thumb of police when you get arrested, and sometimes you're fine, but if you're not sometimes fine, um, that's not that surprising. For all of the limited accountability that cameras offer in the street, or more more to the point, you can see what they're doing, probably nothing will be done you know, with police brutality in the street. What people are doing in jailhouses and prison scares the shit out of me, because I think they could, that's one place where you can probably do whatever you want. Um, there was a couple of Miami Herald investigations recently about people getting killed in Florida prisons, including a dude who got like boiled to death in a shower, like a mentally ill dude. Um, I mean, I think it's great that, that, that this, this came to light and Spencer um, Ackerman is a, is a really good reporter. I think that people need to start paying attention to what the fuck is happening in prisons and jails in America. Like in Texas, there was a prison riot. Um, most of the people there were low level immigrant offenders. I've never supported a riot more in my fucking life because if there's not a, if there's not a libertarian friendly riot, I don't know what it is. <laughs> like they, they, I, I, I think it's time we burn down all the prisons. I'm gonna Amen. be really sorry this is on the internet later, but I don't even care anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, we have the highest decarceration rate burn the mother down. per capita in the world. I wouldn't mind burning down some prisons either, especially considering they're for, for profit a lot of the time. I don't know how you can profit off of someone's misery and the fact that they're being kidnapped and held against their will in their own countries for largely nonviolent offenses. Uh, but yeah, I think that definitely we need prison reform and we need to reduce how many laws are on the books because police can take people under any pretense whatsoever, whether you're driving, whether you're walking, there's some law you could be violating at any given time and they can use that as justification to kidnap you. This guy I was just reading about, he had powder in his car. They were convinced it was drugs and they wouldn't let him go for, from jail for two months until they got the tests back, proving that it was vitamins, that he was telling the truth the whole time. And meanwhile, he's just languishing in the cell because they can't get off their asses and get this shit to a lab. That he shouldn't even be incarcerated to begin with. Like, it's such a stupid law. That happens repeatedly, too. They've confused, like, Jolly Ranchers for drugs. They've confused, you know, herbs for drugs. Like, it's starting to seem like field tests are basically imagination time. Like, oh, that looks like a drug. So it is a drug. Like, I don't I don't trust those. No, things these are so funny. <laughs> Yeah. Imagine really time. I like that. This is like, not, this is bad. There's like a Supreme Court ruling saying cops don't even have to know the laws that they're <laughs> upholding. They don't even need to know what they're enforcing. They just can do whatever they want, basically. And they are. That I don't know about. I think uh, I think I think law enforcement officers should be experts on the law, but you can't have an expert on the law that when you have freaking yeah. law stacks this large, literally fed and local and state, I mean, literally, that's why you have so many specialized forces uh, or specialized segments of the law because there's so many fucking laws. Roll that back, reduce it significantly, and you, you solve a lot of these problems. Because it, it does become cherry picking. And the, the funny thing is I, I get from a lot of people, oh, well, you know, you, you can't have the cops you know, cherry pick which laws they're going to enforce. You know, the 
the guy who chokeholded Eric Garner was just enforcing the law by, you know, preventing him from selling, you know, two dollar cigarettes or whatever without the tax. No, they've become tax collectors. And in many cases, they are significantly going after people that they know can't fight their way out of the system to fulfill a quota or to increase or pad that that population of people that are are in those jails. They're they're essentially tax collectors. And that's <laughs> awful. I, I know good cops, believe it or not. I know some people will disagree with this premise, but there are police officers out there that hate they? what's happening to this culture. They are people oh, that you- do care. They are literally hampered by speaking out. I'll, I'll give you a really good example. Um, Justin Hanners, uh, he wrote a guide for Liberty Me that's called How to Deal with the Police. And he was a police officer in Auburn. I interviewed him. Um, if you look it up on Liberty Me YouTube, uh, Charm Offensive Police Officer Justin Hanners, something like that, you'll find it. It's a great interview. It's very short. And we went through his entire legal battle. They destroyed his life. He lost his house. He lost his pension and none of the other officers who totally agreed with him about the quota system being entirely unfair. And, and basically the general premise was you, you have a situation where this officer is like, okay, I have this quota. I am not finding criminals in fucking Auburn, Alabama. I'm having to give people manu- manufactured jaywalking tickets because I have to fulfill this quota or I get personally punished. I don't get a bonus. I don't get, you know, a good review at the end of the year. So he actually tried to, to go within the police force, have an anonymous petition, and a ton of cops signed on to it. They all agreed with him, not all of them, but a many a significant portion, like over 60 or 70% of the police force agreed with him. This is bullshit. We don't want to be tied to this. We want to be peace officers. We want to practice de-escalation, not antagonism. And he was found out to obviously be the author. He found he was found out to be the author of the petition. And when they called him in front, yeah. it was the unions that basically said, "This is how we pay our bills." So you're trying to now cut into our pockets. And he actually upped the ante and started going individually to the police officers, sharing beers. He knew they agreed with him, and they That's all pulled it up. Cops are pussy. No one supported him. And he they they literally drug him. They drug him. It, it is an awful story. It's an awful story. But they're like, I, I feel like I can't do anything else in the market. This is my specialized skill set. I like what I do. I'm going to deal with the system, and I'm going to be as nice to people as I possibly you, can you, and just deal with it. There will be a couple of people someone, that will get do? shitty tickets. Are you going to be nice, it's or are you going to chop them? I mean, there's a po- I mean uh, thankfully, a lot of cops patrol a lot of safe places and it may never come up that you have to either do something or be a like fundamentally bad person but it comes up for some people i would never argue that there aren't good people who are cops but the institution is rotten agreed lucy it's dire reform at the very least um i mean they do you know law enforcement against prohibition exists like it's not like they're all bad people. That's not really the point. And to argue about that is sort of a distraction. It's that the institution is seriously, seriously rotten. Mm-hmm. And it, it's rotten because the good cops will get fired for trying to be good cops. But I, I got to tell you, I've seen many, you know, just through journalism that I do, I've seen many police brutality videos, and never do I see a cop intervening when a cop's showing too much force. Never. And I'm like, good cop? What's a good cop? Like, why are they not stopping this cop from beating this guy's head into the ground. In fact, why are they all helping him? Why are they all like dogpiling on a 15 year old girl? Like it just doesn't make sense to me. If there are good cops, I don't see them physically getting involved. They can make an anonymous petition. Sure, fine, but it's it's not uh, it's not enough for me. It's simply not enough. Not when I, it's a daily occurrence, people being brutalized. And again, like, it's got to be worse in the prison. I mean, does ever, anybody remember Chris Dorner? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know the Chris cop Dorner? that killed everybody. He, the LAPD yeah, one, right? Chris Dorner, right? Killed remember him? some innocent people, though. Yeah, okay. Yes. He did. He did. And when you read his manifesto, he basically explained everything that was wrong with that entire institution. And I, I covered that for the Washington Times, and I actually got a tip on it right as the story was unfolding from a friend in LA and I started covering it like the live feed that was actually going on and he had a 
ton of supporters on social media that yeah. were creeping me out, obviously. But until he killed those innocent people, or this, we can't, yeah, it, before it came really, really public that he actually killed that innocent girl and that was totally unjustified, it was more like, holy shit, this is what it looks like when a formerly good cop snaps. That's crazy. Like, I, I actually, I kind of, I don't know if you guys listen to the Joe Rogan experience, but it's a great podcast. You know, Joe Rogan is is some is seen in some places as a bonehead. I think he's actually a pretty, pretty, he's a big uh, DMT guy. Very deep thinker, actually. And uh, he likes to bring on some pretty interesting panelists and guests. And one of the main things that I, I really um, thought, um, not ayahuasca DMT difference, but um, one of the main things that I, I got from a couple of his repeated podcasts, because he knows a lot of cops and he's a defender, but he's also a critic. And... I agree with him. It's really hard to do that job. Like it, I mean, imagine every day you get up, you roll out of bed and you talk to people who are either good people or people who are lying to you. You have a shit ton of awful laws to enforce. You're trapped in this system where your entire career is invested in this. And especially the cops that have been in for like 10 years, 15 years that have gradually see that go down and it's gotten progressively worse. Now they're caught in a system that just continues to decline. So, of course, the obvious answer is to get out, right? But there's reality here. It's an awful job market. You are a specialized person in that skill field. You have a pension to worry about. You have families, a mortgage, car payments, all this other stuff to worry about. So it's really hard. And post-traumatic stress is something that people never talk about with officers, like police officers. Most of them That's something no one ever talks do. about. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, cops are I have very little sympathy for cops of PTSD. Cops. Yeah, that's... I'm trying but, but, but it's not just firing you know why they have PTSD? Into because they are trained to assume that everyone is a threat, movie. and then they kill you're somebody right. for no reason because, oh, he might have had a gun, even though they're unarmed. Like, they're whipped into this frenzy because they're taught not to trust us, even though their job is supposedly to protect us. The fact that the cops are getting PTSD is just, I, I think, is an admission that they're using too much force. I will never forget when G20 came I to my actually town, do not disagree. and my friends and I were kind of on the outskirts because it was crazy, and the worst police behavior came after the conference was over, after all of the important political leaders were gone, and they, basically it was 800 riot cops chasing hundreds of college kids around. Um, and 20 of them were protesting, basically. But at one point, a bunch of my friends and I were walking away with our hands up so we didn't get shot with rubber bullets. You know, we're walking very slowly away from the situation. And I will never forget this riot cop pointing his rubber bullet gun at me and screaming, Get back! Get back! As if this mob had him against the wall with torches and pitchforks. And it was college kids on their campus going like this. And he sounded like he was scared to death. It was the weirdest thing. And I think Faith is right. They, they, they whip them up into a frenzy and they tell them, this is war. We need this war tech. Look, you know, five more cops were killed than last year. Like, it's going up. There's a war against cops. You, like, cell phones, maybe it's a gun. We don't know. I mean, they, that's, what they, that's what they do to them. They teach them not to trust us. Um, and the, they don't work for us anymore. If they ever did. You're awfully very quiet true. there, Will. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Will's, Will's a contemplative CrossFitter over here. I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know much about being a cop, but I know I wouldn't want to be in the middle of a, let's say, I don't know, a, say a riot cop or somebody that has to quell crowds that, that wouldn't be like, riding, the safest dude. position. Moreover, I can't really opine on it because it's something that I I don't know what it, whatever they're doing. I wouldn't want to be in that situation either. I don't, I don't, I've never been in the situation that I, so I can't opine on it. I just know that I don't know well, if the institution's so flawed and the institution itself is bad, then therefore no. all cops are bad, right? I mean, that's the, kind of the logic we're using no, no, here. I mean, no, I mean, there can so, be good people, Pat. There can be good right, but, people caught in that institution. The institution itself is yeah, bad, correct? That, so, I mean, we're good people caught in a bad institution. We they are. were good people. Who paid taxes? Not yet. Have you I'm paid good. your taxes yet? Because I have a fucking no, giant tax bill as an independent involved. contractor. You're I, saying mean, it is. I mean, I'm I'm yeah, caught in an awful institution. I am. I am. I fund the guy who's going to give me a DUI I mean, we cannot yeah. excuse <laughs> yeah. the bad things that they do, 
but we also can't pretend what, what's it all they what's the alternative and they don't like what's, understand what they're doing a lot of the time no, but what, they just don't get it what what's your alternative have no, just have no bullshit. like no order which just okay you can privatize the police force like they did in detroit because the cops basically said enter detroit at your own risk but wait, oh, hold on a second. But what are those cops? No. What do private cops do? They ask politely, and then Companies if you don't have do it, private they uh, security you know, forces uh, that work sandwich? better than the police. Like at football oh, games so and baseball games, that's private security. Those aren't cops, and they do it better and or more kind about it than they than regular cops are. You it's know why? Because private too, cops though. are held accountable. Police are not held accountable to the American people. They get away with injustice repeatedly. No, no, no. So are so are no, police the too. They're, they're, they're subject to well. the same Look laws. The, they're subject to the more over there's. Moreover, they're they're under the purview of internal it's cops affairs investigating as well. cops, cops for it cops. is internal affairs, and no one gets found accountable for anything. We all know this. Yeah. Eric Garner. That is weird. There's they a have a largely adversarial. They have a largely adversarial yeah. relationship. I'm going to post yeah, a link I mean, to the private police force in Detroit. What system? What is your proposal for? What's what's, what's so just no, a private police no, force no, solves all no, the problems, hypothetically no, speaking, because at a football game it worked one I mean, time. Like, do you not agree that there are reforms? To I'm not. Absolutely. Every, everybody should be accountable to the law. But show me where there's widespread Wait, abuse by cops. Show me where there's this widespread abuse and when this widespread inaccountability by police. The internet? <laughs> what? What? I said widespread. Yeah, well, everywhere. Where it's is this every widespread day. abuse no by cops? database of uses of force. It's almost like they don't want us to have one. Everywhere, every day, where? They don't do want us do to have cops? I mean, I could make the same argument and say the cops, as first responders, no, save a lot of lives. They lose their lives yes, in the line no. of duty. They don't even, they, they don't even report. They don't report their statistics. Right. Yeah, they don't That's, report their statistics. Here's, here's my on, point. Here's the problem. We're all driving around in Linwood at one, 1 o'clock in the morning, and you have decisions to make in a split second. I'm not excusing lawbreakers in any sense. Private citizens, officials in government. But it's easy to opine on something. Think of another fucking term if you're gonna say Seriously. this, okay? They Don't always say, say that. Split second. That's fucking law enforcement robot What's that? talk. Think of a new way to talk about it. Right. No. 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 Don't. No. That's that was a good argument. Tell me what not to say, and you win. Claim victory. That was a good one. I lose because I said split second. I don't know if that's an argument or not. I'm just saying when you're in a when you're in a patrol car driving through Linwood at 2 a.m. And you get a domestic abuse call, and you walk up to a house, and you don't know if someone's going to open the door and shoot you, or you pull somebody over on the side of a dark road in the middle of nowhere. You don't know who's in the car. These people have a hard job to do. 99% of the time, they do it well. 99% of the time, they do it well. You pick the 1% and say, holy Christ, we're in a police state. Private cops. Yeah, as they Private should be. Private cops are going to be subject to the same things. When was the last time you saw a cop held accountable how, for how shooting change? somebody that wasn't armed? Tamir Rice course, was unarmed. Eric Garner was unarmed. Cops don't go to jail. Mike Brown, arguably. I Joe don't Thomas even know. was unarmed. Oh my goodness! You be in that situation. Exactly. You don't know whether they're armed or not. Before you going. Said, look, the left. The, you have the left hold on, crowd. Hold on, hold on, hold on, guys, 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 guys. Tamir Rice. Tamir Rice. Tamir Rice was a, an example. Okay, Will. The 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 basis comes down to, and again, I I'm an advocate. I know plenty of people that are, are I believe good officers that have privately expressed to me how fucking frustrating it is that Very they have to be right. put in this really awful system, right? And a lot of them do have post-traumatic stress from these very fear, fearful moments where they have to be the voice of reason or defend themselves or defend other people. It's a lot for a human yeah, being know. to handle, right? However, yeah. when you do not have, when you do not have Police accountability. They do not have to report. Uh, to I'm not saying you're, you're making an you argument that, that I've never made. We're going to be held accountable too. I oh, know I that you've not made that. I'm telling you. No. Okay. When you when you say that there's no. okay, when you say there's only one percent a... out there, when you say there's only one percent out there, and they're the people who are committing these atrocities, right, or these awful things, shooting dogs just because the dog was in the yard, or throwing flashbangs, getting all military geared up. Yeah, we got all this equipment from the federal government. That's a, We're that's better a whole other argument. Troops and... That's another okay, argument. Hold on, hold on. Made. When you say that only 1%, no, when you say that only 1% is doing this, or, or some meager percentage, right? 
they are not required to report how many citizens they shoot. They report enthusiastically and very regularly on how many officers are killed. And Parks most of them are by fucking heart attacks and car accidents. So you have to look at the, the big picture. The big picture nine is that it's a very, 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 very difficult I'm not the one cherry picking here. I am looking at the big picture. Nine times more likely picture. to be killed by a cop than a terrorist. You can't America. rely on... You tell me that's right, you Will. Can't, you can't rely on those statistics. You can't rely on these statistics, though. You can't rely on those statistics. Because I've seen... You act like every situation's exactly the same. The cop just pulls up on the corner and shoots somebody. That's what you're... That Like, as if they don't... Oh, As if they're not engaged in confrontation every weapons. day. That's their how job, that? to be engaged in years. confrontations. No, well, hold on. Faith, Faith, how many times have you been in that situation? You tell me how hard it is. How many times have you been in a situation where you had to tell somebody to drop their weapon armed, and they had a gun on you? How many times? No, no, but how many? You seem to know a lot about it, so tell me how many times you've been in that situation. Moreover, let's say you see somebody that might have a gun and might shoot you. Okay, so okay, but, but um, people I, have to do it. Okay, private so, cops don't solve that problem. You know what? Uh, it's human error, is there not? Okay. It's human not error and everything. Any private businesses, any there's human error. They've never killed anybody, and they've been operating in Detroit since the early 90s. 90s, and they do a lot of good work for the community, Ooh. more so than the cops. The police, Ooh. private police officers in Detroit, Ooh. I posted a link to a video in the comments that I highly recommend you watch. There are private police force in Detroit that are doing far better than the local police department was doing. How many situations are they in compared to actual, like, to the two, I don't know. two, two uh, They've been all, uh, working cops. since like, 1992, I'm, I'm I imagine, about, uh, quite a bit, especially police. considering they're the only police force left in Detroit. I right, imagine but, that they're seeing quite a bit of action. Uh, they're often getting called. But I'm just talking basic stats, just basic stats. I mean, let's look at, you're talking about a police force in a small area. Then you want to talk about police all over well, the country you, and compare it and say, well, there's no problems there. They're talking about five away? private cops in a small little suburb somewhere. I'm talking about in the aggregate. All cop, I'll even, and I'll throw in those private cops too. Yeah, I'm sure they're in those situations. They just happen to do a good job. Situation. There's a ton cops of cops are about all over this country. With the there's force three, of a gun. There's, there's three... <laughs> There's 315 million people in this country, and 99% of the time, arrests happen with no problem. That's my point. Now, am I saying that it's perfect? No human being's perfect. No institution on the face of the earth will ever be perfect. Private cops, state cops. That's what I'm saying. I'm not... Then, I'm platitudes. Do they want applause when they don't kill somebody? Yeah, you're the real MVP, officer. Thanks for not shooting me I'm just saying that they're human beings. I have a better conception of their humanity than they have. No, but private cops aren't human. They're superhuman okay. that never make mistakes. They're less likely to make That's what I'm saying. That's my fired. argument. They're superhumans that don't I make don't, mistakes. Don't, okay, okay. Just cops hey, with a bad guys, that work for the let's state. Take a break. Hey, 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 let's take a break. Let's take a break. Why, why, why do we think that private cops, and we have to cut off in a little bit, but I'm a why do we think that private cops, no, no, I don't, I don't think private cops are a viable solution. And here's why. Here's why. I fear very much. I know private defense contractors, okay? They have no fucking rules. They have no rules in a war zone. They can do shit our American soldiers cannot do because they serve the person who pays their bill. And their Report. person who right. pays their bill is accountable is accountable to the United States government. In this sense, it would be the local population. If the local population is not in tune with what the mission and message is of the private agency that is employing this private police force, like we have right now, we do not have an aware market, we do not have cognizant citizen thinkers that are gonna hold these guys accountable. So what makes them not black water? Like what I mean, what makes them not uh, black water? I could I could bring that's up an argument really, I could bring up an argument that says the private police really firms right, would compete, you know. right? Just like anything okay, else but in the market. Private police, but that doesn't what fix the problem. What determines the competition? Money. But what determines the competition? Money. Whoever has right, the money pays the bills. If you do not have an aware and rapt citizen audience that is engaged in what your local police force is doing, which we don't now, privateering is, I would argue, in this climate, in this country right now, even worse. If you had a rapt audience of citizens that were informed and gave a shit, and actually looked at what was going on, or maybe they, maybe you didn't have fucking your taxes deducted automatically from your check. You had to pay them. You had to pay them like a bill. 
well, what happens when your house gets burned down or rocked? I'll tell you what me and my husband will do. And to answer your question, Will, I have defended my life twice with my personal firearm against a potential attacker. I put the gun to his face and I was full of adrenaline. I was fearful. I was scared. I don't, I'm not, I haven't been in war, but I was, I roll heavy all the time. And I never reported that shit to the cops. Never. And do you know why? Because I feared the legal repercussions of what could happen with intense questioning and nonsense. Even though I was perfectly in the right. I was being aggressed upon twice, and both of them left. Once was in a Christmas ball parking lot in Phoenix, Arizona, and the other one was a homeless man with piss dripping down his leg. And I fucking put my gun in their face, and I said, back the fuck away from me. And they did. It was a peaceful resolution, and it wouldn't have been. Now, would the cop have helped me there, though? Would he have helped me there? And what police force, if I don't pay his private bill or his employer for my personal protection, why would he come and save me? So there's a lot of counter arguments. I don't think it's a perfect solution at all. I think the solution is accountability. And accountability requires some data. And these guys do not provide data. They don't talk about how many fucking people they shot. They don't talk about how many people they shoot or or even are, oh my God, there's so many instances of dogs being just murdered everywhere. And now we have the internet. We have instant availability of information. So you see this stuff everywhere. It's not, and I guarantee you that's not reported, it's not investigated. You know how many police brutality complaints? And I guarantee you a lot of them are full of shit. Trust me, there's a lot of ridiculous people in this universe that will file complaints just because they want to. However, investigate that shit and do it through a private agency. If you really, really want the survivability and the viability of a good police force, you have to have accountability. And right now, there's not a lot of that going around. You have police unions that have become fucking thugs just like they have with the auto unions and other unions that, that are just an ever-present institutional cancer. They served their purpose when people were being mistreated back in the day. Now they're sticking the fucking nose in the trough of the American wealth. And that American wealth is your pocket. And that's your local jurisdiction that is profiting bonus parties. Let's go and have you know a, a drug suspect and let's do a, a fucking civil forfeiture. We're gonna take all his property. He's not even proven guilty in the court of law. That is power that should never be afforded to someone that has a monopoly on force in a free society. So there's a there's accountability that can save American police forces, and it's it needs to work within, and it's not being done right now. And I don't know what it takes. I don't know if it takes just continued vocal, public, disgusting examples of consistent abuse to make it something that creates accountability or if it happens within because again there are good fucking cops that i talk to that are pissed about this but they feel hampered by their conditions and they can't improve it because you have some fat cat bureaucrat cunt in a suit that has all the power that has bonus structure and wants to you know make sure that he gets enough fucking money in his pocket that is a bad situation and again it's, it's almost akin to the american soldier that goes out there and fights these shitty wars who profits? The military industrial complex, the fat cat politicians. These cops are not necessarily profiting. They're being held accountable for their results in very limited degree. And basically told, go out there and do whatever you can to make us money. It's almost, it's disgusting the way it works. And who ultimately profits? The cops may be in limited degree. Maybe they'll pepper some, a nice Christmas party for you with a fucking margarita machine, right? But who's really getting the money? It's the unions. Mm -hmm. And that's awful and it's disgusting. And that's what you have to start creating accountability with. Because if you don't, it's only going to pervert itself even more. I agree with that. Agree, no? No. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys I was told you guys I was angry tonight. <laughs> no, you just but, I, I, you I mean, mentioned accountability. Here, no. again. Start, definitely. I like the passion. I like the passion. I mean, yes, no, Will. Do I agree? With everything you said, you're no. the contrarian here. You're the I contrarian. mean, I this is what I, we're on a bunch of different arguments. But my argument was you're making broad-based statements by cherry-picking certain situations. And uh, give me a second. It reminds me of like when the left tells me what what mutually beneficial contractual arrangements I should engage in because they know better than I do. I see a little bit of that when you're when there's a cop in a certain <laughs> circumstance that I know nothing about and an outcome that we may not like happen we may not understand all the facts but as a disinterested third party who was in no danger at all you, opine on how this I should have turned out that, i see a little remnants of that that's my point i'm not saying that 
I'm not saying that every You're situation's lawful, it, so don't take it and you screw it that will, way. If you don't see come, a lot of that. Sorry, Lucy. If you don't come to a complete stop at a Walmart parking lot, you can be kidnapped by police and have enemas shoved up your ass, because that's exactly what happened to this man in Arizona at a Walmart parking lot. So you can sit there and say that, oh, if you don't like it, just whatever, but it could happen to you. It could happen to you. So are you saying faith? Are you willing to say I don't I don't know what circumstance you're willing to, but you're saying that's a widespread occurrence. You never know when it can happen. happen to you. And I think when, when it does happen to you, as it's happened to me, okay. I've been well, brutalized by the police. I've I would, been intimidated by the police. All right. Then maybe it will so then it will. I don't yeah. I I never have. I don't know. Right. How come I never did? I mean I've been pulled over and questioned and I maybe. answer the question, I say, How you doing? Oh, just pure no, luck. My old man never had a problem with the cops in the 70s, so I've been around really 70 years votes. in New York. You <laughs> I don't, asked me I mean, I can for go an anecdote. anecdote. You asked me to tell you a time when I've been in huh? a situation with a gun. I'm telling you a time when I was intimidated by police. No, I mean, I'm not, no, I'm not talking about an. I could, I could come up with anecdotes where cops save people's lives. I'm just saying that's okay. not really a good argument for it, it or against. For I'm just telling you in the aggregate. It doesn't work for you when it's not the point the that you want to make. Right. Like, Tiffany can say that she was held at gunpoint and was able to use a gun to save herself, and that doesn't count either. Well, I have I have, anic I have anecdotes, too. I have anecdotes, too. I got in physical fights where I've had to make sure people don't get up, and I've called the cops. And, I've, and the guy's laying on the ground, and the cop comes and goes, what happened? I tell him, I have a witness, and the cop says, I'll write it up. They draw up a statement, and I leave, and they arrest the guy. So there's another anecdote. I mean, I don't understand. Someone, you could come along and say, well, you didn't have to beat him up that badly, or you could have let him up. Like, the point is that cops huh? are powerful and frequently get away with things when they choose to do bad. Cops so are only... It doesn't cops matter only derive their the anecdotes when they do. Cops only derive power through the people, and they're accountable well, they're to the not, people. Obviously, otherwise the the cops who killed Kelly Thomas would have their faces kicked in instead of being free. So you're saying, so you're saying the no, cops have never been the cops have never been exposed to the law they protect. They always get away with it. Uh, you're the one making the well, generalizations, not me. Often. Hold on, guys, we don't need to show. This is a, come on now. I love the spirited debate. But the cops are not held accountable enough. What is the satisfactory rate of accountability? What's a satisfactory rate of every cop has to go to jail one time? I haven't seen it. There's never been an indictment on a cop. There's never no, been indictments on cops for corruption, not for extortion. Uh, I never so seen not cops recently, just, for murder. Just, it's Very all been rarely, bad. if at all. Just saying. The past like five, six I've seen. Nothing. You know what so happens? You, with the, like, so you, so what, Faith brought up a case. What constitutes Faith a murder to you? Will, Will, Will. Hey, Will, fellow Italian. Hear me out here, okay? <laughs> Listen. The, the case that Faith had just brought up, okay? I know how this shit goes, <laughs> trust me. I, I got the Irish mixed in, so it's even worse. So hear me out here. The the faith the, the case that Faith brought up um, actually did occur, not to correct you, lady, but uh, occurred in New Mexico. And it, I just posted the link. These cops forced this guy to undergo a colonoscopy and multiple enemas to prove that he didn't have drugs up his ass, right? There were no consequences for them. Do you know who got the consequences? The taxpayers, because he sued them for $1.6 million and won. There was Wait a minute. Personal. Are you just saying the law worked? No, it are you just saying I'm not That's defending you? Are you saying the law no, worked? The he law sued, does right? not work. You you are you can't okay. be a public servant. Compensation was he compensated? I'm not I'm not I'm not excusing what they did. It was a crime. It's a crime. You don't just get was he licensed to do whatever the fuck you want because you've been I'm not saying that. I don't know this. I do not Nobody know the circumstances of what you're it. talking about. I don't know the circumstances. Well, it's very of what public. You're okay, about. I just posted it. It's very very public. It's very sure. public. Every but detail of this case is no. very very public. I just but posted it. There, this You're is holding... not cherry picking. It's not cherry picking. This shit happens okay. all over all the time. All it happens all the time. All right. All the cops are doing it. I can't wait to get my animal. Don't go forward with it. <laughs> How many times has this happened and not gone reported? How many times has a woman been raped by a cop and it hasn't okay. been reported? You're... Yeah, you don't know if women are raped, don't raped by cops. Happened in San Antonio to a 19 year old girl at a traffic stop. I don't know many people that don't want raped by the cops for 1.6 million dollars. Well, I don't know about you. I mean, that's your choice, but. I think that a solely monetary compensation paid for by the taxpayers is not really a sufficient... It's ex-post. First of all, that's an ex-post law, so that's what I'm what? talking about. <laughs> You're talking ex-ante. I was talking ex-post. Law. 
I was saying he was compensated for the for the, I, I don't know what happened to the cops. It seems weird that he could sue the city. He was compensated, for what, and, but not by the violators. He wasn't compensated by the violators. Those cops didn't receive right, any but, additional, right, right. you know, a segment of know. their paycheck every month because that's the accountability structure that does not exist, and that I needs to I, exist. And I agree with you. If they break the law, they should be accountable to the law. But I am saying that is not there a widespread uh, be huge by a problem that you're making it out. Sure, it's a problem. I'm but you wrong. can't say that because there's not. Oh, yes, God. there's no. Okay, but you can't say that, Will, because there's not. So reliable cops are terrorists. Are. This is the thing. Bad. Cops are, are terrorists, and they're out oh, to kill now you. Now you're getting ridiculous. No, now you're getting they ridiculous. Are. That's what she's saying, though. That's what she just said. That's the thing. They're nine. You're nine times more likely to die. I don't fear my life from the terrorists. I fear for my life from the police. Just walk That's what the, the Second street. Amendment is there for. I'm having a slice of pie one day, and I just get... It happens all the time. It happens oh, to girls. Pregnant. It happens I to agree. boys. It happens to black people, white people, brown people. It's happening every single day. You need to open your eyes and do some research, buddy. I'm sorry. It can happen to one of your friends. It can happen to your mother. It can happen to your pregnant girlfriend. Oh, I don't do any. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know how to research. <laughs> I think it did happen to my mom. I think that's how I'm here. Thank goodness. <laughs> no, I'm sorry if I'm passionate about it. I may not Jesus exist Christ. without it. Well, what am I friends? <laughs> she must have been walking down the street down there. No, a bag of groceries. Passionate about it. You know, I was what, what, nine months later. One of my friends was killed by the police. That's why I'm very passionate about ever. this. He was this kid that went to Incarnate Word Academy in San Antonio, where I went to college, and he got killed in the apartment complex of his apartment. Uh, just he drove in. He was a little tipsy. Cop followed him all the way home, uh, and the guy was fine. He was safe. He was back home, and then the cop just ordered him out, and the guy said, no, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm already back home. He was like, you were driving drunk, and he was like, prove it, and the guy said, you need to get out of the car, and just kept yelling at him, and he said, what are you going to do, shoot me, and the cop unloaded his clip into my friend and killed him. Like, really fucked up. He did not need oh, to shit, do that. I heard about it's that. Just, it's, so that's why I hate the Sorry. police, like the police before, but now, after that, they've that crossed the line, like. I don't know if I've ever really hated <laughs> no, them no. nor liked them. I don't think I mm. really have feelings towards them in that capacity. It's because you don't have. I've I've charmed my way out of too many tickets to count, and it all comes down it all comes down to the firearm. When I get pulled over and I say I'm so sorry, officer, my little Texas twang, I have a firearm in my glove compartment where my insurance also is. Do you mind if I reach into my compartment and? secure my firearm for you and they have me step out of the car they research the weapon they run the serial number they see they have a ccw good to go i get to have traffic tickets every time if i was a hispanic or a black woman or man it would be very different and i'm i'm not a leftist by the way i actually am following the libertarian rights i'm i'm actually pretty brutal when it comes to some some pretty interesting things <laughs> nope never unbutton the shirt keep it all buttoned up it's all this Get you right out of it. Get you right out of it. And that knowledge of uh, firearms, is, uh, it impresses them. And you know why? A lot of cops, this is why I will advocate, there are many good officers out there. They, a lot of them like to see that citizens, these are, a lot of officers are gun nuts on their own. They like to see that you take personal security for yourself. You don't just depend on them. You've got a CCW, you obviously know your training of your weapon. You know how to carefully handle it. You're obviously a tactician. You're being respectful, though, that I have a fear situation. And I'm telling you in advance that this firearm is in my console. And I'm telling you, which I strategically put them there every time because I usually carry them in my wallet, specifically that I, I want to get this weapon out of my console so you can check it and understand I'm not threatening you at all. That That is... Really, it's facilitated a lot of very positive interactions with police. Then I see shit like Ferguson, where I watched on a live stream police officers who knew that the active violence was taking place in enclaves all over the city where miscreants were burning down buildings and looting and rioting far away from the peaceful protesters. And they applied awful tactics. Our soldiers have stricter rules of engagement when Iraqis are throwing rocks and fucking shoes at them in a war zone than what these guys did. They had 50 caliber weapons awfully, awfully distributed. 
they're literally this guy's got his leg out and he's like yeah i'm so fucking cool i have a 50 cal i'm gonna shoot it at you people i'm pointing in the audience these people were unarmed shirts off no weapons walking up with their hands up because that was the thing of the movement i watched this shit on live stream they ordered all of those people to shut off their phones do not record this do not record this do not record this you are subject by law no you're not no, you're not. Who oh, record this shit? They threw tear gas at journalists to specifically get them out of there, not for their safety. This is where peaceful protesters were, and the mainstream media totally skewed the whole thing. I watched it live stream from independent journalists that were taking a full view on the ground. That mentality is very, very concerning to me, and it's concerning to me because you have a free for all. There will be no consequences for what you do there. Because there was a riot 15 blocks away, or there was a building burning down, but you have a line of peaceful protesters. And I'm sorry, but if you accept a role as a police officer in the United States of America, where you know you have protected constitutional free speech, it fucking sucks sometimes to stand in a long ass line and get yelled at by really angry people. And I'm so sorry, because that has to hurt. However, what you don't do is pull out your billy club and beat a fucking student. And you don't tell them, shut the fuck up, and I'm going to fucking beat you. Who the fuck are you? It's your job to keep the peace, not aggress on people that are expressing their discontent. That's what Egypt shit looks like. In Egypt, they don't give a fuck. They will beat your ass. They will fucking melee on you. And they will rape journalists and fucking do awesome, just amazing fucking disgusting crimes against humanity. We are better than that. And our police force has to be better than that. And they have to know that the American people expect them to be better than that. And Faith hit on a really good point earlier. That culture of, oh my God, these people are gonna fucking shoot you, gotta get away, gotta back away. That's a real, real response to potential violence that can't be disregarded. However, not everyone in a peaceful line of protesters until they manifest intent, was, yeah. this is basic fucking ROE. Our soldiers, I mean, you've got to, you, I mean, these, these local police forces, now that they have all these militarized weapons, I mean, if you, if you really want to look at it, they're actually more highly trained on tactics and military deployment in a peaceful civil environment than any generation ever in America. This is insane. So why are you not applying the same rules of engagement that our soldiers are forced to comply to and comply with in a war zone? De-escalation. You don't show up to a protest in full battle rattle gear. You show up in, I'm gonna keep the peace and you have a, a representative go out and you listen and you shut the fuck up. If our soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq have to listen to that shit, yeah. so do you. And I'm sorry, it fucking sucks, yeah, but you have chosen this job. You've chosen this job. So as long as, as long as it was hurting you, were they hurting you with words? They're hurting you with words? And by getting in the middle of an open street with their hands up and saying, I am a human being. I am a human being. Please do not shoot me. It doesn't matter whether you think it was dramatic or Michael Brown was guilty or not guilty or the evidence was or was it's not mishandled, which it fucking was, a total police cover up. But still. You, you have a situation where you have a peaceful protester and you shoot him with tear gas? Fuck you. You don't have the ability. You don't have, you don't have the capacity to be blessed with these weapons that you should be using against terrorists, not your own citizens. That's a problem. That's a big problem. And I highly encourage you to read Bradley Balco's Rise of the Warrior Cop because he goes back and he interviews cops from Washington that mishandled protests in California where they mishandled protests and these cops are racked with guilt. These are old school 1970s and 60s cops that have seen this nasty trajectory of police brutality and they feel like they set the precedent for that. And they are literally like, I don't even know what to say. Like I sit up and drink bourbon every night because I'm watching this shit go down live and how differently it could be handled. And I feel like I personally as a, a leader of these these anti-protest movements as a police force set the precedent for what's happening now and it, it, to answer the question that we actually began with because we do have to cut off but to answer the question i think 
is there's going to have to be more than hippies and Occupy Wall Street people. And you're going to have to have the Tea Party protesters get hit with some fucking rubber bullets. You're going to have to have some people that actually constitutionalism and Bitch. conservatism and all that other shit. They're never targeted. They actually are very, um, very, and maybe, maybe their ability to speak to the police is a little different. I will not agree with that. I will not disagree with that. However, you're going to have to have some average middle class people get fucking pelted with this shit and tear gas because they have a legitimate movement before there's actually going to be a switch in the cop where the cops like, fuck you, I'm not doing this. That spirit does exist. And I know a lot of people are anti-cop, but it does I'm exist. Anti-cop, and there's a lot of cops that are pissed right. about the way she's going down. I'm anti-cop in sort of a broad way, but I don't yeah. think that they, they they're do. all bad individuals. Yeah. My boyfriend's they're not literally a cop. pissed that they have to do this. I just don't hear him express yeah. enough <laughs> anger at the system mad. to make me, to convince me that he's com- committed to changing the police force. But I, I know they're out there. I just want them to be more visible. That's all. Maybe he has well, to put on a facade, though, because maybe he has to put on a facade. Maybe he is I, I do. with anger. We, we do because every time happens. we hang you know, out, and it never you know, a lot of these guys will tell you. Tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure he has to defend his own situation and uh, do what he does. But yeah. So we we actually are running over by 30 minutes. But if we want to take one question, um, John Kendrick has been a very adamant question asker and he wants to get on camera so we're going to put him on air and then we're going to wrap up in 10 minutes if that's good for everybody john hendrick good to go good putting you on air buddy i'm trying to take myself off so you can get on air hold on (laughs) spreecast is amazing by the way and their developers are working up a system where there's more than four people that can be on camera at any given time so let's give it some time Oh, apparently I'm a producer, so I can't get off. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, I have um, a dirty mind. No pun intended, by the way. Yeah. Uh, that's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so do I. That's why I was laughing. Oh, oh Lucy, you're so sweet. Thank you. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna I laugh. did not realize I was a producer. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's good. No, Will, bring your fire and brimstone. Bring it. I like it. It's good. Get a good debate. Get it going. Hi, John. How are you? No sound. Oh, no. 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 Audio. Where's your sound, buddy? We need your sound. Damn it. Hit your little mic thing in the corner there. Your little. Uh... There you go. There you go. There, <laughs> there you go. it is. <laughs> there you go. What's your question, John? Yeah, I didn't. I post that already. That was from earlier. <laughs> uh, we all know how the. Well, you were still waiting on camera. How profitable the military so I assumed, I assumed... is, and how to. How do you capitalize on peace as opposed to capitalizing on the military industrial complex? But I think, I think that question, uh, I don't know. Uh, what about, what about police? How do we, how do we fix the police system? I think is where, where I, I would like to go from there because the, the other question was from way earlier with a totally different. I'd almost rather thought. answer the first so, one. <laughs> how do you fix the police system? I've got a couple ideas. Anybody? Well, what's your Anybody? idea, John? Share them. Okay. Not a guess. Uh, uh, I think we kind of addressed that. I, I provided it. my solution. My solution. What, what are yours? Uh, and Voluntarism. Privatization won't work. We know privatization. It's a cool ideal, but it's always going to focus back on defense of the officer over the person he's trying to protect. That's that's the only problem with with privatization. What we have in this country are sheriff departments that hold an elected citizen who is from the field of law enforcement, who is really the only law enforcement officer with any authority. And then he dictates and gets to say this municipality can have a department. This municipality can have a department. This municipality can have a department. And we've seen in California in counties where the sheriff has stripped authority even from federal agents to walk around his county as enforcement agents. He's completely stripped them of their right to have a badge or a gun. 
So what we need in municipalities is the same thing as a sheriff's department. You need kind of like, okay, so right now I moved out of Omaha. I live in Nebraska City in Nebraska. We have the oldest standing volunteer fire department right here in our little city. You don't have permanent members that just move into the town to do things. You elect people from your area and then you let them volunteer to do this job as at an on need basis. So they have 35 different volunteer members of the volunteer fire department here. You could do the same thing with the police force. It would work well in a small city like this, but how do you make it work? It's gotta be scalable. It's gotta work for large cities. So you'd have to look at districts and, and small portions of cities and say, okay, this one borough is going to have to pick 35 members or elect 35 members that then can act as their security force. Now that has a couple of advantages because unlike in places like Omaha, which by the way is per capita the most dangerous place for a black man to live right now in the US, um, you have officers that live on the opposite side of town patrolling areas that they don't live in. They don't know the people, they barely, the people they get to know are the problem or the problem causers there so what about a system like that do you guys have any thoughts or any any complaints about that because one we're not trying to violate the nap and two i'm a big fan of doing things voluntarily because it costs yeah. the taxpayers and i like the idea money. of an elected official uh because elected officials have accountability we currently don't have a lot of people in office that were or we currently have a lot of people in office that were not elected and therefore have no accountability to the american people there's no police chief in this Sorry? country who was elected there's not a police chief in this country who's elected. They are all exactly. paid members of the government. And I think that's why you see so much corruption and so many At problems. At the local like level, that. there is. Sheriff. Sheriffs are. Sheriffs are the only ones who get elected. Right. And then there's commissioners that are appointed by elected officials. Eh, like not the same thing. That's like, that's like that's like I hire a guy to dig a ditch for me, and he appoints somebody else to dig a ditch. I am still paying one person to take care of a job for me, and then he is subcontracting not elected right, but, the, but the mayor is direct the mayor is directly accountable to the people therefore yeah the you change a mayor you still right. have the police nope yeah i'm sorry i have to agree with john um i actually proposed the solution my husband and i gnashed it out because he he's a soldier he hates cops cops are cunts to him because he never actually served in war so they're really rude <laughs> they really are they're like, oh, yeah, you're in Afghanistan. Good luck, buddy. Fuck you. I'm giving you a ticket because I have a, you know, this, you know, Napoleonic complex or whatever. So he's not a big fan of police officers. And uh, we had this great conversation. I think all appointed positions should not be through cronyism. You're a public service. Every level of it should be publicly elected. And maybe if you actually voted on who the police commissioner is, that would eliminate a lot of the bullshit politics and pandering and the good old boy unions and the nonsense that goes on and takes place between these people, which is protectionism. They institute protectionism at every level of the unions. That's a, that's actually, to me, a, an effective method to attempt to Point number two. When you actually vote these people in. But the problem, again, comes back to a wrapped citizenry. If your citizenry is not engaged in your Democrat, as long as we're pretending to facade as I, I don't I think national politics is a fucking total waste of time in many places. Right. However, I do support my friends who advocate in Washington and try to get shit done because there is a little minor influx of libertarianism that's infiltrating Washington. And it's going to take a long time. But I think it's effective because we're on the downcline and many on the decline in many ways. Local elections, though, are very powerful. When you vote for someone in your local election that determines your taxation, people are far more engaged in local politics if, you, if, if it's tied to money. So if it's like, hey, I'm police union candidate, not union, but I'm police fucking commissioner candidate number one through five, here's what I'm gonna do for you. And this, this new um, kind of vigor for going after police brutality, like the people are actually engaged, it's, it's on your headlines if you're paying attention and you're, you're you know, not the asshole of Fox News, but you're actually reading independent media, which increasingly more Americans are. That does present an opportunity for significant reform if you voted for them. But here's, here's also the problem and here's the risk. I lived in Arizona for eight years. 
I used to be a neoconservative. Joe Arropaio of Phoenix, America of the County, was the fucking best, man. He was so awesome. He sent prisoners with their pink underwear into open-air tents. As I became a libertarian, I also see, I saw the freewheeling infrastructure that a sheriff, a renegade sheriff, it gave no fucks and what they could do. And that was, it was awful. So you almost need those internal checks and balances by having all of the leaders within your local police force being elected so that there's not politics at play. Because right now in Maricopa County, which is Phoenix, Arizona, that's a massive city. They beat Philadelphia for number five. It's the fifth largest city in America. And you have people that are not convicted of a crime living in 110, 118, 123 degree weather in fucking tents and pink underwear, paying $4 out of a fucking vending machine for their food for the day because his brother-in-law owns the contract for the company that owns the vending machines. So you'll, you'll have corruption on all levels. So imagine if you made these people actually compete. Compete for the level of leadership that they want to have. That's not happening right now. And it's, it's, it's disgusting. And it's getting worse. It will continue to get worse. So I think, I think having them compete by local elections is not a bad idea. I have to, I have to express my, my very, very sincere concerns about private police forcing on American streets. I just don't think the culture's right for it yet. And so I'd, I'd much rather see them compete. I'm loving what Lucy's saying. I miss the part series finale to yell about this. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like the idea of private privatization, obviously, just because I've seen it work so well in Detroit. I think more cities should try it and give it a chance, see if it works for them. Given, you, you know, you're not going to have blanket solutions that are going to work for every city. And that's part of the reason why the current police system doesn't work, because different areas require different things. Uh, so you're seeing a lot of negative consequences of that. I mean, what, what use does the police department have for a tank from the Department of Defense? It's a little ridiculous. I think they're armed to the teeth against people that are largely nonviolent. Uh, a lot of the crime statistics in America have gone down, especially with concealed carry. Cities like Chicago, crime rates gone down dramatically. So I don't know, I guess you just have to weigh. Yeah, why well, have a tank, especially when the only time you ever see it is when they're doing a, uh, uh, a, a warrant for serving a warrant for somebody who failed to appear because they had a traffic <laughs> violation. I, I watch the blotter all the time for <laughs> Douglas County and for uh, uh, Lancaster County here, which is Lincoln, Nebraska and Omaha, Nebraska, two biggest cities by far. And the blotter is full of people with their mug shots, failure to appear for minor drug charge. Failure to appear for driving with a suspended license. And we're rolling out our freaking MRAP so we can pick these guys up in their front yard while they're waiting for their kids to get off a school bus. What the fuck is that about? That's not that's not protecting or defending the people. We need to also separate. We didn't talk about this one yet. We need to separate the inspections. Well, I guess you guys did touch on it. The inspections of the police force cannot be a function of the police. It has to be wholly private. You have to hire private attorneys to come in that have no affiliation with the city or local governance. That's the only way the citizens can get a fair trial against a member of the government. Agreed. Lucy's chanting your name. Quit agreeing with me! <laughs> no, Will's stroking his beard. He's the contrarian here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I don't. I've I'm thought just about this long and hard, and I've got a buddy here on the police force, and and Chief Lacey uh, do a lot of IT work with him and his department, and he knows I'm a member of Cop Block, and I told him flat out, you know, I, your department is really good. They are. It's a small city. They are known throughout the community, so they can't fuck up because people will mail them. Interesting. Yeah. Fair enough. I like it. All right. Good questions. We have to wrap up. We went way too yeah. long, but it was good. It was a really good spirited debate. So it's awesome. Thank you guys so much for your amazing perspectives. And yeah, it was, it was good. I like to, uh, we don't want the echo chamber. I like the, uh, 
the contrarian will over here. <laughs> and it's good to have actually disparate opinions where we actually talk about this shit because it does matter. It's very, very important. Uh, I'm a big advocate of prepping and I think that we have some really nasty shit coming our way. So I don't like that the police force really has this culture developing to where they're almost antagonists to the people that pay their, their bills. And that's not healthy to me in a free society. So yeah, it's it's good to have these debates and, and actually you know express ideas and, and get shit going. So we're gonna wrap it up. Um, thank you everyone so much for ask, asking all the amazing questions that you did. Um, sorry, we're actually not more hammered, <laughs> but it, it was good. It was it was good shit. Um, thank you guys again. We will. Yeah. I, hey, hey, I, I still got a I still got a bottle of wine. I, again, Irish and Italian. Irish and Italian. Cheers. It was this, like, this, this not was halfway full when the show but, started. That was empty. Good shit. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's why you're like no nine 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 and Will too. I love it. But Will's not even drinking. He's just ridiculous. I love it. Yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I got through this show without one drink. So let's do let's do a let's do a cross thing. Uh, Will, you guys are gonna have to invite Faith on Beer and Bastards next time. I know that's a good idea. Faith's gonna have to. uh, Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think it's really good. Just get those. uh, Because I'm sure Kevin. I'm sure Kevin Ryan has been seething seething to to chime in with his nonsense too. I know he is pretty nonsensical though. Everything that guy says is nonsensical. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, really, why doesn't he even listen to him? <laughs> no, I, 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 I totally okay. agree. He's kind of, he's Confusing. weird. And he's really weird, too. He sends, yeah, he takes weird pictures <laughs> of himself. But don't tell him. Oh, uh, I know. Him. God, it's so creepy. I will take Faith's side. Yeah, because she's hot. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Kevin. So what are you saying about Will? So what are you saying about Will? Oh, that's, that's he's really just playing it cool friend. now. He, he tells me these things in <laughs> private, and it gets super weird. I love really it. Really weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually uncomfortable now. Just stop uh, thinking about it. Stuff about my beard uh, and my hair. <laughs> the beard. Pretty, pretty gross. Uh, Alright, all right, you guys. Awesome show. We went way long. We actually went two hours, so we'll have to cut it in two parts, but it'll be good. It'll be good shit. So I'll make sure to link you, and we'll be good to go. Thank you so much for everyone that Thanks. chimed in and showed up and asked amazing questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to all of them. There's like There were nine at one time. We only got to three. So uh, thank you. We'll be back next week, uh, Tuesday, obviously, at 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern for our sound check. But we will probably go live 30 to 35 minutes afterwards. So let's all uh, keep that in mind. Uh, But anyways, thank you guys so much. You can find this on LibertyMeBnB.com and also the YouTube channel, both for Bourbon and Bitches and for Liberty Me. So enjoy the shit show <laughs> after we close out. And We're actually Watch not... and bastards. Yes. Oh, I was about to pitch you. Calm your tits. <laughs> we actually we actually have uh, Faith, her column at Daily Caller you can subscribe to. Lucy also has an amazing podcast, Politics for People Who Hate Politics. Really weird that that would be the <laughs> name of her show because she's so on point with that. <laughs> um, and it's good shit. And then uh, also, you know, Will and the rest of these awesome guys have beer and bastards and it's actually just a it's a pretty new show but they've got a good little following going on and what's great about them is that most of them are, are pseudo conservatives pseudo conservative they like to bring on uh anarchists to to really really stoke the fire so it's a good uh good debate but anyways uh thank you guys Thanks, so much Tiffany. and y'all have a great time and we'll see you I next will. tuesday cheers bye thank you <laughs> bye bye cheers Oh my god. Yes. I am so sorry. It went so heated. Oh, what's that? I could not like wow. It was oh, really no, that's, good. I wasn't heated. I was just talking. I don't you know, I was I like it, you know? <laughs>